Happy Sabbath. Thank you for coming to today's Sabbath School lesson. And it will be called Covenant Faith. And I just want to remind you that we'll be doing this every Friday. So please come and join us as we do. So today's, today's title is called Covenant Faith. So you can be expecting about the covenant, what relates to the covenant. It requires faith. And since faith is needed to be, is the main key to the covenant, you be, you, we will be talking about and explaining how, how to have a strong faith and how there, and explain it in four different types of different types of faith, how we can be part of today's covenant. covenant. And if faith is like this, faith, just explain faith like this. What, how does faith play in the everlasting covenant? What does it do? It says you the everlasting covenant is God's commitment to give us salvation, thus restoring our relationship with him that was lost at Eden. Our part of the covenant is to be just. That is to fulfill what God requests from us. So, every time, every time when God established the covenant, he wants to give us salvation throughout the start of the establishment of the covenant. He committed, he, com he used his commitment to give us salvation. Then, he restored our relationship with him every time we accept him. And when we have faith in him, our relationship is restored with him. And we have finally regained the faith and regained the relationship that was lost in the Garden of Eden. So this is that our part of the faith of the covenant is to be just. That is to fulfill what God requests from us. So what it means to be just is to be righteous and to be following him to be right and to be always following and that's what is needed from our role in the everlasting covenant but did you know that the bible tells us that we can never be we can never be just by ourselves and the only possible way that we can be just and we can be righteousness is god's gift to us and if in our how do we get faith in him having faith in him and also is the possible another possible way to be just and when god when we have faith in him he gives his gift of god the gift the free gift of god that jesus revealed in the cross and when jesus died on that cross god gave Jesus as a gift to us so that we, when, every time we do something wrong, to be righteous is to do nothing wrong, to be blameless. So even though we do wrong, every time we accept Him and we believe and we have faith that He is our Lord and Savior, every time that, every single time that that happens, our sins are forgiven and it's like we never sinned before and we just be, we are just righteous the whole time as if we did nothing. And here's a famous verse in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. This is mainly about Jesus' sacrifice for us and that for the whole world, that if they believe in him, they will no longer perish. They will be eternal and they will have eternal life that he has given to us. So... Jesus fulfilled, he fulfilled this the part of the covenant at the cross. And it says that the cross is known, also known as the heart of the everlasting covenant. So if, if Jesus did not die on that cross, without the cross that, Je that, cross that Jesus had died on, if, uh, if he did not die, there would be no covenant. His part of the covenant would not be fulfilled and there would be no hope for us. And his gift to us will no longer be available and we will no longer be able to earn salvation. But because of this, Jesus risked everything by accepting the punishment that we deserved. And accepting, what he means by accepting the punishment is, since the wages of sin is death, we are supposed to be experiencing death because we have sinned. And because God, because the punishment is death, Jesus, he decided to come 
to the earth and he decided to die for us and he accepted the punishment instead of us having to experience it. So when every time we love every time we love him, Jesus loves us. His love is stronger than death and he has overcome death. And when he accepted the punishment, we have to have faith in him, even though we didn't deserve it. Having faith in him would would be like having faith would mean to believe that he saved us. So when we believed he saved us, our gift of God is obtained and we are fulfilling our part of the everlasting covenant. And God's love for us, when this his love that he gave to us through Jesus Christ, it is stronger than death because he has overcame it. So when we accept and so during the eternal separation that was supposed to happen eternally and that we would experience death when we sinned in the Garden of Eden. And when Adam and Eve sinned, that was it could cause an eternal separation. But God established his new covenant and he sealed it. And he sealed it with Jesus. He started established the covenant when Jesus had died on the cross. And the seal was his sacrifice of the covenant. The everlasting covenant seal was a sacrifice. But if, what do we have to do to be part of this covenant? We have to have faith, we have to believe. If we believe that Jesus Christ had died on the cross and that he is our Lord and Savior, we will be saved. And our place that was supposed to be in the cross, Jesus has, re has been replaced. And then we will be able to save and Jesus will reign forever and we will live in him forever and not have to follow the consequences of death. In 1 John 5 verses 11, it says, this and this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son. And you can, and I just want to remind you that this will, can be found in 1 John 5 verses 11 again. So, this verse is actually explaining what this topic is. It says that God has given us eternal life. And how did he give us eternal life? When he sacrificed his son. His son, the the holy one, the merciless, the, the merciful one, and is also blameless. He came to this earth to save us because no one could, not even angels, no one, no created being ever, only Jesus. And when Jesus sacrificed, he rescued us from slavery and we have been, our chains have been broken. And Jesus, by shedding his blood, we, through his blood, our sins have been washed and we have been broken. We are broken chains of slavery by sin because sin has chained us to death. And when we, and when Jesus died on the cross, we are no longer prisoners. But even though salvation is free, there's only one cost, and that and only God can do that. Through Jesus Christ, the life of the Son of God. The Son of God, through His life, He shed His blood for us. And since He is the merciless one, it's supposed to be like a symbol during those old days when um they those when we sacrifice the lamb, it's supposed to be a symbol as to like Jesus being sacrificed because that lamb represented Jesus and when you sacrifice that lamb our sin is forgiven but Jesus his sacrifice is the real one and our sins have been forgiven throughout the past and if we accept him throughout the present we have to accept him we have to keep accepting him even through the future and every day we have to accept him into our hearts there in Genesis 15 verses 16 it states, and he believed in the Lord and he accounted it to him for righteousness. And Genesis 15, 6, 15 verses 6, according to this article, this quote was used two times by Paul and once by James as an example of salvation by faith. And you can find this in Romans 4 verses 3, Galatians 3 verses 6, and James 2 verses 23. And this, this can, this, what he, what happening here is God, he's telling Abraham that he will have a son. Abraham believed that it was unbelievable, this was impossible, but he, through God's promise, since God told him that, and he had promised that, God, Abraham had accepted him. And 
even though that was actually physically impossible to have a son while you're at an old age. So he trusted him, and it actually happened. Because of this, God con considered Abraham as a righteous man. But did you know that in, you can find in Genesis 16, verses 4, he, it says that he failed by taking Hagar and lying about his relationship with Sarah. So it says here that how could God consider Abraham righteous if he obviously was not? He has committed this sin. But how could God consider Abraham righteous? Let's, let's find out. In Romans 4 verses 5, it states, But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. The word justification is to, the meaning is to be made. When we are justified, we are made or we, we are made to be damned or to be called righteous. And if we are justified as righteous, righteous means it is an act of faith for the believers, an act of grace by God. So when we are righteous, we are just, when we are justified by right, righteous, we are justified righteous. We, it means that we have accepted God's grace and that we are fine, we are we have become became someone who has faith in God and has accepted Him. That is what just is the meaning of just being justified righteousness and right and to be justified righteous. So it states here that we cannot bring any work of righteousness before God that would make us righteous. So all the work that we, so when we are justified as righteous, every single work that we have done is not, we can, every righteousness that we try to do will not work against God. But God, our faith is actually called righteous. So what is, even though Abraham had sinned during that time, since he had faith in God and he had repented, God calls, still calls him righteous even though he had done bad things. And we all do bad things, that's our nature. But when we accept God's grace and we have faith in Him, it's like we have done nothing and we are considered righteous. And this phrase may confuse you, but it says here, our faith is accounted for righteousness. So you may be wondering, what does that phrase mean? It says here, it means that we are considered righteous, although we are not, so we can enter heaven. So even though we are not righteous, to be accounted to be righteous, means to be righteous but in a way that we know we are not but we are considered righteous all either way so that we can enter heaven because only the righteous can enter heaven we are considered righteous because the righteousness of christ is imputed to us so what this means is that when we have to be righteous because since god jesus christ is righteous through his righteousness and through our faith and our belief in of him, he decides that we are righteous since we have accepted him as our Lord and Savior. And when we are justified as righteous, there are actually some something that is called sanctification to be claimed. And there and he says here that it can be stated into four parts: love, obedience, character, and development. Every single thing has changed, it has been cleaned. So even if we're all no matter how holy we are, it says that we are righteous before God by faith. Even if, how bad we are, no matter what we have done, if we accept Him and repent to God every day for our sins that we have mistaken and we have done wrong, we are considered righteous before God because of our faith. And in 2, 2 Corinthians 1 verses 20, it says, For all the promises of God in Him are yes, and in Him, Amen to the glory of God through us. So, it says that for all the promises of God in Him are yes. So if you repeat this phrase, it's talking about the God's promises. God has promises us, and if we follow His promises through Him, that we have faith in Him, He will glorify us, and we will earn what is what God had promised to us. And did you know that the covenant is based on God's faithful promises? 
if we claim those promises by faith, they can improve our lives today. So when every time God has promised something to us, if we follow Him and we have faith in Him, if we have faith that He has done this, not and instead actually believe that He did, that He will do what He said He would, then it can improve us and it, God will glorify us and improve our lives today. In Ellen G. White's book, God's Amazing Grace, it states, Righteousness is obedience to the law. The law demands righteousness, and this the sinner owes to the law, but he is incapable of rendering it. The only way in which he can attain to righteousness is through faith. By faith, he can bring to God the merits of Christ, and the Lord places the obedience of his Son to the sinner's account. Christ's righteousness is accepted in place of man's failure, and God receives pardons, justifies the repentant, believing soul, treats him as though he were righteous, and loves him as he loves his son. This is how faith is accounted righteous, and the pardon soul goes on from grace to grace, from light to greater light. So God has given us his holy law, and what does it mean to be obedient to the law? It, it, it means to be righteous, and through our righteousness, based on this passage, our soul, every time we have become righteous, we go from grace to grace, from God's grace, and we change from His grace to another grace. Because to be grace is mean to get something that we don't, we didn't deserve. And through God's grace, we have been changing our lives throughout our lives, and because of His grace. And our light shines even greater. We have to share our light to others, because every time we grow with God, our light gets lighter and people will get that light too and they will understand and they will want to follow God too. So mainly this topic is about having faith in God because faith is means to be believing in God. And when we believe in God, we are fulfilling our part of the covenant. And when we fulfill our part of the covenant, if we believe that He did, it, that He saved us, and we believe that everything He did will happen for real, then He considers us righteous and we and considered us as we did not do anything wrong and our light shines even greater throughout our lives i hope you guys have a great sabbath day and thank you all for watching today's sabbath school lesson i hope you have a great day god bless you